Dana White has chosen 11.39 p.m. to finally unveil some UFC 300 fights. We got three in total and we got a few other fight announcements, but I want to talk about the three fights he has unveiled and one potential fight that is being hinted at by none other than Alex Pereira. Let me just say, before we start, please consider a like, share, comment if you enjoy the video, and if you're subscribed already, please consider hitting the bell icon, really helps me in the algorithm. And with that out of the way, let's get started. Now, a few of the fights that, that ended up getting announced is the prelim opener of Bo Nickel versus Cody Durden. Now, oh sorry, no, Cody Brundit, I'm, I'm getting somebody else confused. Now, let, let me just say about this. I know some people are saying Bo Nickel is being handed cans to build up his resume. He, he's getting easy opponents. And all I gotta say to that is who do you think wants to fight Bo Nickel? Like, as a fan base, we all agree that people like will dodge Dagestani fi fighters. Bo Nickel is our equivalent of a Dagestani wrestler, okay? Nobody wants to fight Bo Nickel. If anything, I give Cody Brunditz, who is 10 and 5 in his pro career, I think we need to give him a solid stack of money. Because nobody wants to fight Bo Nickel. And, I mean, like, it's not like he is a bum. I mean, he's coming off a two fight win streak. I believe his, yep, his last fight came off a round one, actually, no. Two of his last fights ended in a round one finish. So, we're slightly going up in, in difficulty, okay? Bo Nickel's getting tested. It's a good prelim opener. I was never a fan of Bo Nickel getting guaranteed a main card spot. Purely because, I mean, you gotta earn, you gotta, you gotta earn your keep. And if we are going to give him opponents that are at his experience level, which we should, those guys don't deserve to, bre to be the main card opener. They just don't. I think this is a really good spot for this fight. I have nothing to complain about here. And we're going to go on to the next fight. This next one is another preliminary bout. And th this one I actually was able to somewhat predict. It is Aljamain Sterling versus Calvin Cater for his 145 debut. I hope the main card is good. I know some people are saying, why are you doubting here? And because I, I don't know what the UFC is trying to do for the main card, but Aljamain Sterling versus Calvin Cater as a preliminary bout is insane. I know Aljamain Sterling gets a lot of shit, but Aljamain Sterling versus Calvin Cater, that's a good fight. We finally get to see what the skill level of Aljamain is at 145 pounds. Calvin Cater is the official journeyman of the 145 pound division, unless you want to go up in difficulty and fight Max Holloway. 145 has the most journeymen of any division. You have Calvin Cater and Joss Emmett as like the mid-tier journeyman, and then you have Max Holloway who beats everybody except for the champion. And that's a problem with 145. I, like, Aljamain Sterling could dismantle Calvin Cater, could easily submit Joss Emmett, and then fight Max Holloway and get absolutely tuned up. And I do feel like that is a possibility, because Max Holloway and O'Malley have similar styles. I would argue O'Malley has better movement and mobility, but the boxing of Max Holloway is just better. So... I personally thought it would be really interesting to see Max Holloway versus Aljamain Sterling for UFC 300, but I think they're saving him for a BMF matchup for that same card. That It just hasn't been announced yet. But Calvin Cater versus Aljamain Sterling, great fight. I'm excited to see what it is. My predictions will come out when we get closer to the card. And the third matchup that was officially announced is Yuri Prohaska versus Rackins. This I want to clear up because a lot of people are saying that this fight is a preliminary bout or should be on the prelims. One thing that should be noted is on Tapology, this is a main card. And before you get mad at this and say, oh, I guess, I guess UFC 300 isn't going to be that big. What? What? Yuri Prohaska versus Rackids, I believe, is going to be a fight of the night, honestly. 
This will be one of the best fights on the entire card. You have Yuri Prohaska, who believes in only violence, and Rackets, who is the dark horse of the entire division. I like this placement of the fight better than what was supposed to happen. To give you the, um, the brief explanation over why this fight is happening, because a few of you are going to realize, wait, wasn't Jan Blachowicz supposed to fight Rackets? So... Jan got injured, he ended up pulling out of the Rackets fight, Yuri Prohaska offered to step in after getting KO'd by Alex Pereira, this is in January, offered to come in after getting KO'd by Alex Pereira, Rackets agrees, Yuri agrees, the UFC puts the kibosh on it and is like, wait a minute, wait a minute, we like this fight, but we're going to move it from January, because January is already looking pretty good, and we're going to move it to UFC 300. I like it as a main card. I, I suspect this is going to be the main card opener, purely because that's that's a hell of a hook to get people to pay for this card. I, I think that's the best placement you can do. I think Aljamain Sterling versus Calvin Cater is going to be the last prelim of the night, and then you immediately go in the Yuri Prohaska versus Rackets. That's good placement. Now, for the final fight, this is where I get a little conspiratorial. I'm going to put this, what I'm talking about right here, so you guys understand what I'm about to speak about. Alex Pereira posts on his story, 30 plus 300 equals 3. Th this was really weird when it was posted, and I think this caught a lot of traction, purely because UFC 300 is the biggest talking point in MMA right now. And for Alex Pereira, somebody that could 100% be on the main card of UFC 300, both like schedule-wise and name-wise, for him to post something with 300 in it is really interesting. I've heard some pretty interesting breakdowns of what this could possibly mean. I'll probably I'll give you my favorite, and it is I believe it was something like uh, Alex Pereira has 29 KOs. He wants one more KO that would make 30. 300 obviously means UFC 300, and three maybe means three belts, but here's the problem with that. That would mean bro would have to go up to heavyweight, and I, I think it would be an interesting thing. Imagine, I don't think this is going to happen. What I think is possible is the three means like the trilogy bout between Israel Adesanya and Alex Pereira, something I've also talked about on this channel, and if you haven't seen that video, you should probably watch it. Talking about the trilogy bout with Israel Adesanya. If you want to get crazy with it and say, oh, it's about heavyweight, the problem with that is Alex Pereira would have to fight Tom Aspinall. I don't hate it. I, I don't I don't hate that matchup. I think Tom Aspinall gets it done, frankly, because I think the power between Tom Aspinall and Alex Pereira is pretty similar. I think Alex Pereira has slightly more power, but Tom Aspinall is quicker. The only edge that I would give to Alex Pereira outside from a slight power advantage would be, bro is just so unorthodox, it's hard to get a read on the guy, and that's one reason he's able to win all these fights. I think at the bare minimum, this hints at a potential return at UFC 300. I love that. Honestly, I don't even care who he fights. I don't think the Jamal Hill fight's going to happen. I think the injury is still healing. I think that's going to be his first title defense at light heavyweight. But if Alex Pereira wants to stay busy like he has been proving he wants to do... I mean, let's not forget, bro made a three-month turnaround from getting KO'd by Israel Adesanya to fighting Jan Blahovitz. I mean, like, that's still impressive. If he wants to stay active, I think UFC 300, either Israel Adesanya for the trilogy, for that's what the three means, or a third belt in Tom Aspinall. I think that's the least likely, but the most fun. We still have no main event and we still have no co-main event or even a feature fight. But these are three fights for UFC 300. And and I'm getting fairly satisfied about it. Yuri Prohaska vs. Rackets is definitely a main card fight. Calvin Cater vs. Aljamain Sterling. Prelim, pr the end of the prelims is good. Bo Nickel vs. I'm, I'm sorry, I forgot your name. Cody. For the preliminary opener is also a good fight. So far, I'm liking UFC 300. What's a dream matchup you want for this card? Put it in the comment section below. And if you enjoy this content, please consider a like, 
comment, subscribe if you haven't already. And with that out of the way, adios, guys.